pretty good. This picture onto this Instagram account without the help of a computer on this episode of Micromatic. All right, guys, so I've got a photo on my camera that I actually want to post on the Instagram. Uh, and I'm going to show you exactly the kind of workflow I tend to use. And this workflow should work for anybody, assuming you've got an i5 memory card uh, and a phone. So the first thing is go onto the camera uh, and we are going to pick the image that we're going to transfer, right? So here I've got the this picture and you know I can cycle through all my photos that I've got on the camera. You can see these are just normal photos. Uh, I'm going to select one and hopefully you can see this, but I'm actually going to go down and mark it as protected. Uh, you can see it gives it this little icon up here that indicates that it's a protected picture. And what that does is that actually signals to the i5 memory card that this is an image that I want transferred. So I'll set that down and I'll go over into my Wi-Fi settings on my phone. And we will look for the i5 option. And so now this is a Wi-Fi signal that's being broadcast from my camera now. Uh, I don't actually need to be in range of a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, other than what's on this camera to, to be able to do this transfer. So now once I've made that connection, I can close that, go into the iFi app, and any of the pictures that I've gone in and marked as protected on the camera will automatically start transferring. And you can see here with the iFi card, it's actually pretty quick. So that image now is on my camera. Sorry, that image now is on my phone. Uh, and so, you know, I can go into my camera roll uh, and you can see here's the image that we were just looking at on my camera, now on my phone. So with a photo like this, let's go ahead and just take a look at it. Uh, with a photo like this, you know, it's a decent picture, but you can see that the, the highlights, the whites in here are super bright and the, the blacks of my motorcycle are really dark. It's a, a pretty challenging uh, pretty challenging situation for any photo. Um, and then you can also see, because I was using a wide angle lens, there's a little bit of distortion or maybe it's not even distortion, it's just that my angle wasn't bang on, right? With a, with a wide angle lens and you're shooting uh, uh, architecture or any, any sort of structure where there's straight lines, you know, there's going to be there's a good chance that you're going to get lines where you know maybe this line is perfectly vertical. You can kind of see how it matches up here with the side of my screen, and you can see how this line right here is not perfectly vertical. So before anything else, you know, before I get to bothering with this color correction or making any of those sorts of touch-ups, the first thing I want to do with this photo is correct that perspective to get it where I want it to be. Uh, and on iPhone, there's actually a really good app for that and I am not going to be able to pronounce this correctly, but this is it right here. It's called SKRWT. Uh, I'm just going to say screw it. So you open up the app. It's a very simple app. You just you know, select the photo that you're interested in playing with, uh, and it gives you all these different options for manipulation. Usually the first thing I'll do is you can toggle the grid color, uh, and I'll just find the color that stands out best on the particular picture that I'm looking at. Uh, here I'm going to say yeah, probably the red just because the blacks and the whites make it hard to see uh, the black and white grid. So the first thing I'll do is I'll tap this one tool down here. Uh, this is just the generic straightening tool uh, and you can see it rotates the picture right and it leaves the grid on there so it's pretty easy to uh, line up a straight item on your photograph with the straight grid to make sure that you're getting a perfectly straight photo. Again this is for the people like me that are very particular about this sorts of thing. Let's see. So right now I'm looking at is I'm looking for uh, a nice straight line that goes all the way across the photo, or at least as close as possible, right? And up here at the top of this photo, you can see this beam uh, that I'm going to use as my reference point. So I'm going to straighten that out. I got that in a good point, good spot. You can actually tap and hold an image to see the change you've made. And here I've not made much change. Uh, and this is, again is just straightening the whole image. It's not actually correcting these uh, uneven, unevenly vertical, vertical lines that I've got. So now I'm going to use one of these two tools down here. Uh, if this were taken with a fisheye lens, 
this tool right here would actually be pretty good for correcting that. But because it's just a wide angle and the, the distorted lines are basically just a, a function or a, a, a side effect of the angle at which I took the picture, these tools right here are going to help me correct that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to, because the horizontal lines are pretty good, I'm not going to bother with this tool. Uh, it's the vertical lines that are more messed up, and so I'm going to go with this tool to correct for that. And again, same sort of idea, right? I'm spinning this little dial at the bottom to move the picture in and out. And again, you can just use the on-screen grid items or grid lines and line them up with the lines that you're trying to correct. You know, you can eat, there's very obvious vertical lines in these boards, and so it's pretty easy to line them up with the grid. And let's see, it's in here again. You can tap it to see the before and after. Here you've got lines that are quite straight, and you know, it doesn't need to be perfect, but that's good enough for me. So here again, you can tap it to see the before and after. It's a pretty minor change, but when you when I'm looking at these pictures later, uh, not having those straight lines is going to bother me, and it's especially important when you're taking pictures of architecture. This is just a picture of a dumb motorcycle next to a dumb barn, so maybe it's not that important, but it bothers me. Anyway, so now that I've made those changes I'd like, I will save them to the camera roll, because then uh, the other photo edits that I want to make to this photo are not going to be done in Screw It. They're going to be done uh, in Snapseed. And so Snapseed is usually the first app I'll jump to. If I don't need to make any perspective corrections, I'll just go right into Snapseed. So Snapseed, again, you can just open a photo. This is the photo I was working with. Again, this is the corrected one. And uh, if I hadn't already done this, usually the first step I'll make in Snapseed is to straighten the image, right? We already did that in Screw It because we needed to make those other corrections, so I'm not going to bother making these changes. But just as sort of a, a, a breakdown of my process and my order, I always start, my edits always start with uh, perspective and then framing. Uh, and then I get into the color correction, etc. So here I've got the, the perspective done. Uh, so the next move I'll make is I'll change my framing, which and by, by that I mean I'm going to edit the crop. So in Snapseed, you know, there's a pretty simple crop tool. You can select, usually I'll stick with one of these default uh, frame sizes, just because I think it's a good idea to keep my frames or my images cropped to, to pretty consistent aspect ratio. So, so let's say this shot in particular was shot in a 3x3, three three, or a, sorry, 3x2 aspect ratio. So I'll stick with that, and I'll just use this uh, tool to set my crop. And I'll be honest, I'm a slave to the rule of thirds, and so it's pretty handy that Snapseed puts this grid on top of the image, which hopefully you can see in the video. And if not, just go ahead and download Snapseed. It's a free app, um, and you can check it out for yourself. But so again, I'm a slave to the rule of thirds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this image so that these, uh, these grid lines kind of match up with elements on the screen. And so you can see here is a, a third line here and a third line here, meaning perfectly on this motorcycle. Uh, these vertical line, or sorry, these horizontal lines in the photos aren't going to quite match up perfectly with that rule of thirds, but you know what? That's okay. I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to be crazy today. So I'm going to save that change. And now at this point, normally I would actually rotate the screen and because this is a horizontal photo, you'll get more screen real estate for your, your edits uh, if you flip the screen horizontally. Uh, that said, I've got it here mounted in a steady position for this camera, uh, so I'm not going to bother. Um, and so down here, you know, these are all the different edits that Snapseed gives you. Uh, the mo ones that I use the most are selective adjust down here, uh, tune image, again, straighten and crop uh, at the beginning, uh, and then detail for sharpening. That said, the sharpening, I'm not, I'm going to leave that step for the final, the final step. Um, and now another another function in Snapseed, which I don't use for every photo, but for a photo like this, it makes a lot of sense. Is this HDR scape option? Um, HDR photography. Uh, if you don't know what it is, I don't know. You can look into it. Maybe I'll do a video on it later uh, here on Micromatic. But uh, the easy th thing to, or the easy way to understand what HDR does is it will help balance out the difference in the brightness of these whites and the darkness of this black. Um, 
if I tap this button, it's going to load up my picture and it's going to make it look terrible right off the bat. Actually, that doesn't look so bad. Um, you know, HDR photography can be quite overboard and this would be an example of, I would say, overboard HDR where, you know, it's brought out the the darks, it's made those a little bit brighter and it's kind of toned down the, the, the brights a little bit so that it's not quite so jarring, but the whole picture now just kind of looks gross. So what I'm going to do, bring that brightness back down to default just to start. And I usually bring the filter down to zero. So again, this is where we were at. And then I just kind of bring it up a little bits at a time until it gets to a point where I think it looks, you know, it's helping save some of the, the shadows here. It's helping tone down some of the highlights here, but it's not making the image look unrealistic. And that to me is important. You know, and with Snapseed, this little button up here, you can tap it and kind of see the before and after this step. And you can see here, you know, that's actually doing a pretty good job right off the bat of balancing out those, that harsh contrast that we were seeing. So I'm going to save that change. And now at this point, uh, the next change or the next step that I'm going to go into is I'm just going to go right into Selective Adjust. Uh, selective Adjust is pretty cool. Uh, very similar, you know, functions that you'll see in Tune Image, but what's different about Selective Adjust is that you can you can basically pinpoint where you want to make those changes. Uh, I can say, all right, I'll hit this plus button down here, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to put down a point. So I left that point there, and now I can change the size of it. it kind of it, everything here works in a, a radial fashion, um, and what's really cool about this tool is that it's actually smartly restricting the area that it affects to matching colors where you put the point, right? If I wanted to very precisely put the point, I can do this, right? I can, oh, I want to make sure I'm only adjusting the black. So I'll put this somewhere in a blacks area uh, and then I will stretch that out and you can kind of see the area that it's going to affect. Um, maybe that's a little bit too much whites. So again, let's move down here to the blacks and that looks pretty good. So now that the changes you get, you can scroll up and down. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation. Here, I'm most interested in, in adjusting the brightness again, because we use that HDR tool to bring out a lot of that shadow detail, but there's still a lot missing. It's still pretty dark down here. So I'm going to bring up this brightness actually quite a bit. Uh, and then usually when I bring up the brightness, uh, that has kind of the side effect of lowering the contrast. And so I'll bump up the contrast again just to kind of compensate for that. And then to give you an idea that what that change is going to look like, I'll hear it toggle back and forth. And you can see just that one change, how much more detail I'm bringing out in that motorcycle. Uh, let's see, some other changes I might make. So here you can add other points, right? I can add a point up here, and I'm going to edit just the whites. And you can kind of see I'm stretching that out. Uh, and then I maybe I can bring down the brightness a little bit, up the contrast. Maybe it's a little bit too dark. Again, the, the goal here isn't to make it look too unrealistic. It's just kind of to make up for the deficiencies in a camera. So I made that point. I think it looks all right. But you can see that because this is sort of affecting a radial area, it's not actually reaching over here. So I'm going to make a copy of it and paste it over here. So I'm doing the exact same changes just on that side of the screen. Um, and then one other, th well, let's see. I think, I feel like the headlights are a little bit dark here. So I'm going to bring up a little bit of brightness in the headlights just to make sure that it kind of stands out to the user, right? Uh, it's kind of like, you know, headlights are almost like the eyes of a motorcycle when you're editing a portrait photography. It's going to be important to bring a lot of focus to the people's eyes, you know, assuming they have attractive eyes. If they have ugly eyes, just darken them, make them, I don't know, crop them out. But if they have really cool eyes, you want to bring a lot of brightness to it. And so you can kind of see how there, uh, I'm making sure that the, the headlights of this motorcycle are standing out. So I'll go ahead and save those changes. Uh, and one unfortunate side effect in, in Snapseed is once you've saved a change at that point where I hit the, the check mark, uh, and it's processed, there's no way to undo it. I mean, it's not overriding your original file, but I can't take a step back from here. Um, but again, you can kind of see where those edits have taken this photo. This is what it looked like originally. This is what it looks like now. Uh, I'm going to make one more change in Selective Adjust. Um, I'm going to bring out the gold in the wheels here. So again, I'm going to add another point. I'm going to take my little zoom tool, and I'm going to try and target just that gold. 
And so what I want to do is just bring up that brightness, give it a little bit of contrast to make sure that I haven't ruined it. And see just a subtle effect that, uh, that really helps those cool gold wheels pop a little bit. So here, I'll make a copy of that same edit I made, bring it over to that wheel. And there we go. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with this picture at this point. Um, that said, I'm going to go ahead and take it into another photo editing app just so we can show you uh, some other tools that are available on iPhone. So again, here's the before, there's the after. It's looking pretty snazzy. I guess I'll show you one last step that I'll often do or two last steps I'll often do in Snapseed. Again, I think I mentioned details. This is where you can do sharpening, right? So I'll use you, I'll, I'll take the zoom and I'll put it on the detail that I'm most interested in standing out or maybe where I'm, I have the best focus. Uh, and here's probably the, those headlights. And I'll bump up the sharpness, usually to around 10 or so. Uh, you know, the effect is pretty subtle. You're likely not gonna see it here in the video, but maybe you will, uh, but you know, the goal here is just kind of bring out the sharpness in the picture and the, the in-focus details without making it look too sharp. And that, that is definitely a possibility. Uh, I don't know if I can show you any, if this will show up well or not, but I'll go ahead and bump this up to 100. And now you can see that these details, it just got really harsh and kind of gross. It's, it's made it sharper, sure. But it's also kind of added a white outline to things uh, that don't actually have a white outline. So, again, I usually keep my sharpening around 10, between 10 and 15. Um, maybe if I've missed focus, I'll actually bump it a little bit harder. Uh, and then, finally, my final step in Snapseed is I'll look at this automatic contrast adjustment tool. Um, this does two things. It does contrast correction and color correction. A lot of the times the color correction doesn't do exactly what I want to do, uh, so I'll usually bump that down to zero. And I'll go back to the contrast correction and kind of play with that a little bit to see. Because, you know, by default it will sometimes pick a pretty contrasty image. Uh, I don't really like it, so I'll usually bump that down, but you can see this is actually helping quite a bit. Um, so I'm gonna go with a contrast increase of plus 24, who knows what that means. Uh, and then I'll go to the color correction and just kind of play with it to see if I do like that better. And uh, I I don't know, it kind of makes the image a little bit, it's removing some of the warmth, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with that photo. So these are all the changes I want to make in Snapseed. I'm going to go ahead and save it to my photo library. So this, again, this exports a copy of that image. You're not going to overwrite the original image that you had uh, transferred. So if I go back into my camera roll, we can see that's a picture of a goat. If you're interested in the picture of the goat, you can check out my Instagram. This is the original picture that we transferred. This is the copy of it that we corrected with Screwit. And then this is the color corrected version uh, straight out of Snapseed. And you can kind of zoom into it and you can see that we've got the image in a pretty good spot. But hey, let's say that, you know, I'm not happy with this detail up here in the barn wood. Maybe it's a little bit distracting. I actually, honestly, I think it looks fine, but I kind of want to show off this other app, uh, this other tool that is available on iPhone. And I think it's also available on Android. So I'm going to open up this app right here called Touch Retouch. Um, and if you are familiar with Photoshop, and specifically the newer versions of Photoshop, there's a tool called, uh, what is it, like Content Aware Fill. And this kind of does that on the iPhone, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a photo. I'm going to find that edited photo. And because I don't want to degrade the quality as I'm making this edit, I'm going to go ahead and go with the original size. This is the full size image. It's kind of cool about both of these software or all these softwares I've been using is that they don't degrade the resolution of the image. So now here we've got that same photo open. I'm going to zoom in on that detail that I said that I didn't like, but really I don't really care about it. But um, use this lasso tool down here and you can just draw a circle around the thing you don't like. Right. Once you've drawn that circle around it, you can hit this play button and presto changeo, it's gone. Uh, oops, that was an accidental tap. Um, 
now you can see that's gone and maybe that's a less distracting image. Maybe we've brought out, you know, we've made sure that the, the focus is on this motorcycle. Maybe you think that's a better picture. So, you know, it's neat about this little app is that you can do that as much as you want. You can also use a brush tool instead of the, the lasso to just kind of paint things, right? So I'd say, let's paint that little knot. Let's paint that knot. Let's paint that knot. And then again, just play. And after a little bit of processing, it's going to have removed those knots from the photo. And maybe we have a less distracting photo. So again, I'll go ahead and save a copy of that to my camera roll. Like the other apps, that is saving a copy. It's not overwriting the original. So if I go back to my photos, I should have now four versions of the same photo, just sort of different stages of, of this edit. So now that looks pretty cool. I could just go into Instagram uh, and I could use this tool here to share it. That said, there's kind of a big issue with Instagram, or at least, you know, with people that like their photos, is that Instagram is going to force me into cropping this image into a square. And so, you know, the motorcycle fits into the square. That's kind of cool, but maybe I really liked that you know, original aspect ratio, that original three by three, and I'm losing that here uh, because I'm going to have to crop that image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually close Instagram I'm going to open another app. Uh, this one's called Instasize. And if this one's not available on Android, I'm sure there is some equivalent. Uh, and so with this, you just open the photo that you want to post to Instagram. This app has very limited functionality, but for what it does, it's quite useful. Uh, open the photo. This is the one that is has all my edits. Uh, I hit this share button. This UI is a little silly, but now I select Instagram. A little Instagram thing's going to pop up down below. Uh, and what it, that does is now it has this image in Instagram and it's preserving the original aspect ratio. Uh, we've got white bars up in, on the, the tops and bottoms of the images because basically what it's done is it's created a square version of that picture just by filling in those empty spots with white. And so now I can post that image uh, as is and that is a 3 by 2 photo edit uh, that I have taken off my camera is now on Instagram. There were no computers involved. I hope you've enjoyed. If you're interested in following me on Instagram, here's my username, M-R-S-A-L-L-E, -L -L -E, uh, same as my Twitter. Uh, and if you're interested in more videos like this, go ahead and hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll see you later on Micromatic.